Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is February 7th. Uh, this is the weekly Jupiter Dev meeting. And this week we are using Dropbox Paper um, to experiment with it as a new platform for our weekly meeting notes. Uh, so far, I like it, um, but ultimately the team will decide um, on whether to move forward on it or not. So if you're viewing this video afterwards and reviewing the notes, um, we would love your feedback um, as the members of the community uh, and, and help keep us honest on um, serving you the best that we can. Uh, let's see here. Um, cool. Let me just um, dive into some action. Before I get started, I added a new section um, to the top, which brings the action items from last week in um, to follow up on. Um, so we had uh, three, I believe. Uh, one, Grant was having some issues with the notebook test, conflicting with Jupyter Lab. Says that's resolved. Grant, can you confirm? Confirmed. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, Matias said he could use some help uh, reviewing his Jedi integration PR. Matias? Um, yes, that has been merged. He it's says it's been merged. And uh, finally, if you want to weigh in on heuristics for partial rendering of notebooks for performance improvements, you can go here. So is this from last week or? Yeah, that's last week. Okay. It, it's from last week. I put it again in this week, but we did get some commentary. It just, yeah. But you need more. Well, I just wanted to make sure um, if Chris wasn't around, so we wanted to talk to Chris about it. Um, so uh, I don't necessarily think we need anything more. It's just we wanted to reach some sort of consensus. And mm -hmm. right now, like that's not our current problem. We kind of also wanted to figure out when to solve it, which we have, I think. Okay. So it sounds like you're drawing, reaching a conclusion, but you're not quite there yet. So we'll have it up for another week. All right, next. Um, so on the project management side, um, we have, like I said, Dropbox, Dropbox paper is up for evaluation this month. Um, I'm also putting the links to the Etherpad notes and the Dropbox paper notes in the Hackpad. Um, so until we move over and um, adopt a, a new platform permanently, um, I'll keep the links in the Hackpad um, since our community is still um, condition to to go there and check for notes there and they can um, use the links to um, go out to these new um, tools. Um, also the project management tutorial will probably be scheduled for the earlier date that I um, sent out and I should send out an, an invitation for that today. I think what I'll do for the folks who um, who aren't able to make the day that I schedule is we'll you know I can organize a Kind of like a, a movie party and we can watch the video and um, go through GitHub projects, um, do like live demos of GitHub projects so everybody becomes, you know, facile with, with using it. Um, so you can look for that too if you are one of the people who um, can't make it on that day. Good. All right. So the next section is pretty big. Um, that's notebook. And that's Grant, Thomas, and Jason. So there are various more specific details in the the paper. I don't know what noun we use to refer to this now. Um, but the, the main point is that we're heading rapidly for Notebook 5.0 because there's various features and fixes that we want to get out to people. Um, so that people who are using released versions can be on something closer to what those of us running from master are, are working with. Um, so yeah, please help us to, to get that out soon. And if there are any critical things that you know need to be fixed, then please make sure we're aware of them. Cool, thanks Thomas. What else? Yeah, that, that about sums it up for the notebook. We're just really focused on releasing 5.0. Uh, so okay. um, I just saw that Brian um, uh, created an issue for testing the, the UI UX of 5.0. So I guess 
if everybody can, um, you know, clone master and play with it if you're not already doing so. Um, and if you have time, you can look at these, um, this issue specifically, but um, yeah, just, just use it and just make sure that there's nothing uh, broken before we, we release it. It's always and I think, <coughs> sorry, then go ahead. I think Brian also opened something in um, GitHub and has been mailing us to um, sync the notebook release plans with the Jupyter Lab team to make sure there aren't any uh, big holes we're leaving, we're leaving open or something like that. So some some syncing across across teams to happen before before we ship the final release at least. That makes a lot of sense, and I can work with Jason and Brian on that. If, um, you need help moving that through. Okay, Matthias, did you want to talk about your section here? Yeah, so I've been um, working a bit on uh, right to left and left to right layout for notebooks for um, other languages. Uh, so far, I realized that we know nothing about that. Uh, I had some uh, helpful um, discussion with some contributor uh, on the notebook repository, um, and it's starting to take shape. And I think that for Jupyter Lab, we could um, also drop some uh, bidirectional isolation tag every now and then in the DOM structure um, to be sure that it handles correctly switch of languages. And it would be nice to synchronize uh, Notebook, Jupyter Lab, and NB Convert to have this uh, structure in place. It's probably not, uh, this time is not a good uh, time to have a long discussion about that. So I just have dropped some notes um, in the uh, Dropbox. The end. All right, thanks Matthias. Any feedback on that folks? You can use the commenting feature in uh, Dropbox paper. All right, uh, let's see here. Jupyter Lab, Stephen Darian. Um, I don't have too much to say other than uh, the three things that it were sort of we woven into notebooks, uh, the the completer, um, inspector, and tooltips. Uh, the past few weeks, the project has been to extract them out for the three projects which is the um, which is the most integrated of them. So uh, if if that can be cleanly extracted, it'll be nice. It'll create sort of a model for other plugin authors who want to add behavioral things to notebooks and consoles and don't have the full access that we have. So it'll be a good proof of concept that you could do this uh, in a plugin. Uh, so um, that's what I'm working on this week. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff Steve added, so I'm sure he'll want to talk about some stuff. Okay, um, just about done with the cell metadata editor side panel. Um, we had some discussion about what what it looks like to edit a blob of JSON data. Um, we have an attempt at, at a simple version of that, um, and that should land in master today, hopefully. I'm, I'm still running tests for that behavior. Uh, but that same metadata editor can be used for the notebook level metadata. And, and essentially what's going on is uh, as you're editing, it should be uh, parsing to make sure it's valid JSON and it should be handling uh, programmatic changes to the metadata that are happening while you're trying to edit, so rectifying those. Uh, so if there's some behavior in there that uh, handles merging and, and reverting to what what the programmatic changes uh, that I think makes sense and based on some discussions we've had. Um, but yeah, once that lands in master, I'd appreciate feedback on, on that behavior, see if it makes sense. Uh, but essentially what you, you should be able to do is click on one cell, copy the metadata out of out of it, click on another cell, paste the metadata, and then commit it. And, and that's the workflow of sharing metadata between cells. Uh, and that same editor um, that is used for that could be used at the notebook level, uh, just maybe in, as a tab in the tab bar or as another sidebar panel. Uh, it needs to be seen where we want to put that. But at least I, may, I try to make it uh, isolated enough so it could be used for either cell level or, or notebook level metadata. Uh, the other thing was server extensions and lab extensions shared the problem that uh, they were using the traits dictionary as as their as their config level object and those do not merge. Uh, we we were <laughs> making the assumption that we we're merging uh, this configuration across user 
system and, and site pack uh, site level uh, configuration that wasn't the case so we've uh, been special case the server extension and uh, we're taking a similar tack on um, lab configuration as what notebook does in that it moves it to a, a subfolder and treats it uh, as mergeable data um, so that you properly get this merging behavior and then we now have a playground uh, similar to what the, the notebook has to add more configuration files in that folder without conflicting with anything else. And that's it. A uh, quick, very quick question, Steve. Um, sorry, um, Ian and I had traffic problems and we were super late. Um, the, uh, the, the cell metadata editor that you were just mentioning, it's only meant for editing um, input metadata, correct? Uh, it's not meant to edit because I figure, I mean, we also have metadata at the output level, but that stuff tends to be very fragile because it's typically set by the code that produces it. Or did you mean, or or did you intend for the edit, the manual editor, to also be able to to touch output metadata? Uh, right now, it's just input. Uh, so p feature parity with the classic notebook, except instead of using a modal, we're trying out this this sort of advanced editor for blob okay. editing. Okay. No, I was just verifying. I think that makes complete sense. I was just clarifying for my own understanding. Thanks. Thanks, guys, and welcome, Fernando and Ian. Hey, Ian, um, are you able to take the action items down from the meeting today? Well, I'm having internet connectivity issues at the moment, but I will. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give it five minutes. <laughs> I right, can. So. Uh, I do have connectivity, so I can help with that as well. Okay. Cool. So there's a section at the bottom of the art notes um, for that. So thanks very much. Um, it looks like there are a couple notes from Brian here. Um, Brian is not on the call, as far as I can tell, um, but he did um, leave some notes here. So he says that our designer at Cal Poly, Cameron, um, has been doing a ton of design work on Jupyter Lab, and this will continue in the coming weeks as we approach beta. So thanks so much, Cameron. Um, it's likely that we will have a Jupyter Lab beta out uh, a little later than expected. Uh, we originally thought it would be mid-late February, but dealing with dependencies and lab extensions has been more complicated. We may have, we may have mentioned that earlier today. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're working on addressing any remaining remaining performance problems with large notebooks. Um, if anyone has a large notebook that tends to be slow in the classic notebook UI, please ping us on the Jupyter Lab issue um, 1639. Um, so hopefully I didn't repeat what Steve or Darian just said. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> cool. No, that's um, great. That's really good. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see. IPy widgets. Uh, Jason and Sylvan. Hey, uh, Jason is not uh, joining today. He's got another another meeting at the moment. Uh, so yeah, we closed the last bug marked on the 6.0 milestone for IPy widget six. Uh, the big to do item, the, the remaining item, uh, is to migrate to FOSS for 1.0 before we can make an actual uh, release. Um, we, uh, there is an ongoing work on uh, custom styling of widgets, which was something that the users ask for a lot. Uh, so the problem with that is that we didn't want to expose too much um, because exposing too much would end up exposing the actual DOM structures of widgets, which we didn't want to 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 do in order to remain backward compatible and enable us to change in the future. Uh, there is a new uh, LaTeX widget, which is a multi-line, unlike the current LaTeX widget. Um, and we've done lots of fixes uh, in the CSS and with respect to Phosphor.js resize events. There is a new widget, which is a placeholder widget that is being displayed when a custom model or module cannot be loaded. Um, this is this was a big issue for people to debug when they were trying to write custom widgets because um, the error messages were pretty hard to catch um, because of the nesting of promises and async calls to require JS. So this should make things easier because we are catching everything that can be caught. That's it. And does that placeholder widget provide those error messages? Does it basically display to the user all of that uh, error information? Yeah, it's actually a table that displays the the uh, model module uh, and the model class, oh, as well as the version string that is trying to that they are trying to to load, as well as the error message. Okay. 
Excellent. That's great. So oh. does, given that you've closed the last thing that was a bug and you only have uh, a couple of small things, do you think an ETA for 6.0 is like a couple of weeks maybe or shorter, longer? Do you have any, any sense? So the, the, the main item for us is uh, to use Phosphor 1.0 when mm -hmm. it is released uh, because if we don't, and JupyterLab beta is released using Phosphor 1.0, we won't be able to support it. So we will need to make a backward incompatible release of IPy widgets like 7.0 right away just to support JupyterLab. And we probably don't want to do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Thanks, thanks Sylvan. Um, and thanks, Fernando. Uh, next in line, we've got Jupiter Hub, Min and Carol. How are you guys doing? Good. I've been teaching locally here, so I have not a not a whole lot of exciting progress. Just plugging away on um, refactoring things, getting the using OAuth for login and and helping Christian with the multiple servers thing. Um, and uh, what are you teaching? Are you teaching a, a course or a workshops? A uh, workshop. There's uh, it's a software carpentry related thing called Research Bazaar that was running at the University of Oslo. Uh -huh. So I was teaching uh, mm -hmm. um, incoming researchers in various disciplines about how notebooks are great. Um, and then I'll be doing a similar thing um, at uh, Siam CSE in Atlanta in a few weeks. And mm -hmm. then and it's immediately after. So I am that I'll be in Berkeley for a week. Uh, but yeah, cool. I'm, yeah, we're very, we're very excited to have you here. I have a lot of um, evangelizing on my uh, on my schedule right now. <laughs> so I just plugging away with the uh, uh, Jupyter Hub and HubShare. Also, we're exploring some different uh, design ideas for how HubShare should work as we get closer to putting it together. Yeah, that's definitely something that I think when you're here, we're going to want to brainstorm a ton on. So um, um, is there anything that uh, we should, other than uh, reading the uh, the issues, um, is there anything that you recommend that we read up on HopShare to pre-soak our, our brains? Because I, I that, that's something that I'd like to discuss with you in an informed capacity. Yeah, so there's the various, uh, they, they, I, I've been, oh, uh, Carol and Brian and I have been opening issues and to create a place for discussion. And I think the main thing is uh, trying to be, uh, have as much concrete input about what people actually want to do so that we build something that's useful um, is the main thing. So if you've got people who who need this, like who can write down exactly what they, what this is in their mind, um, then we can make sure that we design toward actual needs rather than, mm -hmm building something in a vacuum. Yeah, so I think one action item that I'm putting for, for myself is that uh, we schedule perhaps a, a meeting when you're here with the folks from the various people from Data8 um, uh, early in the week, uh, people like QV and, uh, and Ryan Lovett, um, so that we have a chance to discuss this regarding what they've been doing on Data8, because that, I mean, that, that is right now being used extensively. Um, and with hundreds and hundreds, I think they're up to close to 800 students. I think is is the the plan for this uh, for this semester. Um, and I'm sure that they have they have they have good feedback on that front. So I'll schedule something for when you when you come to talk to them. Great. All right, it helps to take myself off mute. All right. Um. It looks like also you guys are uh, want some feedback on some of the HubShare issues. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean anybody who has who is interested in contributing to those conversations is certainly welcome. And more, uh, and the more for for people who have Jupyter Hub deployments, um, where sharing uh, stuff is something that people are asking for, having as much detail about what exactly that means to people in terms of what they really want to be able to do is the most useful thing right now. Okay, that's the vacuum piece. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, anything else on your end, Carol? 
uh, just sort of following up with um, Min was saying about evangelizing uh, late February, early March, I'll be kind of going through the Midwest uh, meeting with probably the supercomputer folks in Minnesota, doing a hackathon at University of Illinois, and hopefully meeting up with Matthew um, Turk while I'm there. And then um, some of the folks from PyLadies and Python, PyData Chicago, and then um, helping Ben Zeitlin and other folks in Ann Arbor get their first PyData meetup um, started. And then I'll be in Berkeley the same time that Min will be. So um, I look forward to seeing everybody then. Yay. So awesome. Thank you. Um, actually, on that note, Min and Carol, could you guys um, send me a quick note if you have any any slots already blocked for that week while you're here so that when I schedule local things with you, uh, I don't impinge on anything where you might already have a block? Yeah, I think Aaron Coolidge has scheduled one thing uh, okay. probably with the eight folks, but that's it. I'll send you that. Yeah, and I'm completely wide open. I haven't scheduled anything yet. Okay, excellent. So I'll take care of things on this side. Thank you, folks. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, MB Convert, Mike is out of the office today. He's homesick. So um, we have our Speak No Evil monkey back. Um, so I put that in the notes. Um, moving on to IPython, Matthias. I don't know if I mean to. Uh, so I've been working on uh, tab confusion again in IPython um, because in some HKs and big modules, when you do, for example, import matplotlib and matplotlib.tab, the first time it encounters matplotlib, it can take up to 20 seconds to generate the confusion. So I'm working on work workaround in IPython to basically send as much confusion as we can gather in uh, half a second. Uh, if Jedi is still working in the, in the background, and uh, working on the Jedi code base as well to speed things up. So far, I have a branch that uh, brings things that were taking around 20 seconds on my machine down to 2.5 for the first time you execute them, and around 0.1 the second time you execute them. Um, I'm still going to work on that for, um, for a couple of days, and guessing, seeing the complexity. That's it. Uh, Matthias, we, we did something similar to that in um, Spider. We're, we're, we kick off rope and Jedi at the same time, and whichever one we get back first wins. Yeah, so one, one of the differences is that right now, the new version, Jedi has a new feature, which is basically hook into um, an interpreter instead of just being scripts. Uh, so it has to do some extra work because it also inspects um, the live namespaces of IPython. So even if you don't have the code, you can still do some static analysis, and this part is not well basically cached um, and had some. Yes, some I saw your PRs, nice job there. Uh, yeah, we, if, if, we can, if we can maybe share something in, um, between, between Spider and IPython, it would be great. If you can, on, on my PR for Jedi, uh, if you can put some links on Spider, to, uh, where on Spider I should look. I can, uh, okay. You know, I'm happy to work. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, let's see. Next, we've got conferences and outreach. Um, Min, if you don't mind, I'll just read this. Uh, Min will be at the SIAM CSE um, talking about Jupiter at Atlanta at the end of February. I think he mentioned that in his report. Um, Carol also mentioned that she'll be talking about Jupiter Hub and Jupiter Lab in Ann Arbor for the per first Pi Day to Ann Arbor meetup on March 2nd. Oh, and hey, if you guys uh, could add these to the um, our project board, that would be fantastic. Um, let's see, and also the Chicago yeah. Pie Ladies. Uh, Ian is giving a webinar to the computational infrastructure for geodynamics on Thursday about usage of Jupiter in the geosciences. That sounds super awesome. Um, Fernando is working with Andrew Ottawan on JupyterCon, so please, he says, everyone remember to spread the word in your networks. The CFP is open. Uh, Carol will be working with the program committee on doing outreach for underrepresented speakers. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, Jamie, could I, since uh, uh, we have a lot of URLs floating around, uh, maybe could I ask you to add at the, um, here at the end of the conference as an outreach section a reminder of the link to the, pro the calendar project board? That way people, oh, people sure. kind of know what to click on because we have so many URLs on GitHub flying, flying always at the same time that I'm sure no one remembers them all. Sure. Thank you. Great. 
there's a shorthand of the board and kind of a I'm not super excited about the workflow right now. I think at some point I'd like to add a, actually an events repo because um, right now this pulls from the project management repo um, and the, we do so much um, outreach stuff that the, um, the issue log for project management is, uh, is mostly events. Um, so I think at some point I'd love to create an events repo in here where we can all just, we can have just a running list of all of our events. Sure. Um, and, yeah. Uh, Matthias's bot could, could move any existing events issues. Uh, the bot could, could move them over so that we don't lose continuity with those. Sure. Um, yeah. And so the workflow here, folks, is uh, first you create the issue in the project management repo um, using the format that all the other events have. So I think it's the name of the conference, the date, um, so like 29 January, um, that, and with post, uh, post separating um, the, the ideas. So the name of the event, post date, post, um, and then the location. Um, and you create that. I usually drop a link in the issue in the description, and then I assign it to the folks who are attending that event or presenting at that event. Um, and then I go to the projects, the events board that's at the project Jupiter level um, and pull that card in. So um, we can try that. <clears throat> Let me know how that goes. We'll continue to refine that process going forward. Good. Okay, um, Pete, I, I think I saw you join. Um, you're next on the list. Um, services, Colonel Gateway, Dr. Stacks, et cetera. Sure. Um, Colonel Gateway, last week I said I was hoping to make a release. Uh, I didn't get to fixing the last uh, notebook PR. Uh, it is a notebook in a PR, <laughs> not, not against the notebook project, until uh, yesterday. So um, I messaged the user back that submitted the request, and hopefully he or she will review it. But if anyone else wants to jump in, that's great. And then we can cut a release on that. And for Dr. Stacks, was just noting um, the Travis build started failing yesterday. It looks like something changed in uh, Ubuntu land as far as package requirements. I just need to dig into that. It's mostly an FYI in case anyone's building the Dr. Stacks on their own. Stuck brokenness until it's fixed. And is this, is this going to block? Is, does this completely block any Docker image that has the JVM in it, or what's the deal? Uh, it will block rebuilds of the Spark images, which are sort of leaf nodes in the tree almost, near leaf nodes, one of them is a leaf node. Um, but as far as the images that are already built, uh, the, the binary images, the last time they successfully built, they're still available. So it's really only if people are Git cloning that repo and wanting to build it themselves, uh, they'll have to work around it for the moment. Okay, weird. All right. Yeah, it, it was kind of surprising. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. All right, Sylvan, last week you shared some um, information about Zeus. Um, that's gone now. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it was just an effort from last week. Uh, nothing new about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Great. All right, so then. Um, Thank you, Blue Triangle, Steve, for uh, filling in your action items. So anyone else who um, brought up action items, if you can help uh, Fernando and Ian fill in that section a little bit more if yours is missing. Um, I don't know why the action items from last week is down here now. Um, I would like to keep it at the top um, so we can talk about it first thing next week. Um, so whoever moved it, can we go back? Thanks. Um, we have our releases this week, so um, NBGrader uh, 0.4.0. Um, the release notes are there. Jupyter Core 4.3 is ready to go out. Jupyter Client 5.0 should be ready soon. Um, API Kernel 4.5 also soon. Kernel Gateway 1.2 hopefully, um, and and a Notebook 5.0 being a question mark. Um, so good. That's that's the end of our notes. Does anyone else want to tack on anything to the end? You know, Nick. Sometimes we have some stuff that we don't have in our notes, but you want to add on. I guess Min, give me a call when you're in Atlanta. I'm here all <laughs> the time. 
Yeah, we'll do. And I know, and I know the guys over at GT or at Georgia Tech that uh, are running a pretty big install over there. Um, cool. So we can do some intros there. Uh, Tony Fast. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to do a, a big shout out. Sorry, go ahead, Karen. Um, Thanks, Steve. I wanted to do a big shout out for Jess because um, 0.4 was a big release and with a lot of changes, and she did a great job documenting those changes and working with the contributors on that. So um, there have been emails on the mailing lists and, and lots of um, good screenshots and things in there as well. So thank you, Jess, and contributors. Yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. Jess has been doing a uh, terrific job with uh, with that stuff and and I'm, I'm delighted to see adoption of it kind of across because it, it began as something that was mostly to meet Jess and Brian's kind of personal needs with teaching but it's it's really good to see that it's kind of working across other use cases. All right, folks. Um, uh, I just wanted to say uh, I added Jupyter Lab 0 0.16 to the list of releases for the week. Awesome, me too. Very happy to see that moving forward. Good job, guys. And I know it's been hard, and I know that the, the dependency mess under the hood has been has been a really complicated problem to solve. So I, I appreciate the, the stubbornness and tenacity to keep keep hitting it until it breaks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Fernando. Thanks, team. Thanks, community. Right. Thanks, Anything folks. else? Sounds like it. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye. You guys have a good week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care.